Hello and welcome to Movie Poster Chat with Limelight Movie Art. And today I'm just going to talk for a few minutes about how to help you decide what poster you'd like to have. And that sounds a bit of an odd topic, but in the gallery we have a few people who come in who know exactly what they're looking for, who know the title, who know the size, who know the nationality of the original movie poster or lobby card that they want, they know where it's going. Many more people come in with a rough idea. They have a few titles that they have in mind or they have a few actors, actresses they have in mind. And even more people come in just with an idea that they've seen, they've heard about uh, original film posters or original lobby cards uh, and they think they'd like to have one as well. So, you know, it's a, it's a real joy to be able to help people come on that journey from Thing I'd like a film poster to having something that really suits them, does the job for what they had in mind and they're able to take it away and enjoy it. So to get the obvious practical questions out of the way first, there are two and, and I understand that the first one of those is a horrible question and personally if I'm looking at something in a shop, in a gallery, in a car sales room and the first question the salesman had is what's your budget? That worries me and it puts me off and I think all they're interested in is my money and therefore I normally say, well, I don't have a budget, which of course is a silly answer and it's just showing off of not wanting to say how much I want to spend because the reality is everyone really has a budget because it, all it means is what do you have in mind for what you would like to spend for what you're looking at. So as I say, I really understand why that's a difficult question. And in a lot of cases, it does depend, depends on what you see and, and so on. But to have an idea of how much you're looking to spend really is helpful because film posters, like any pieces of collectible art, really vary a lot in collectability, in rarity, and therefore in, in price. So having an idea really is very helpful because it can start to steer us towards some ideas that will fit. Um, and obviously, if you're buying for a gift, you know, it's easier to say, for so-and-so's birthday, this is what I want to spend. And that's easy to work with. When you're looking at something for yourself, for your house, it is a harder question. But ha try and have an idea of, of what the budget is. And then the second very practical, boring question really is, what size? Where do you want it to go? Um, so not everyone knows where they think they'll hang their poster if they if they buy one but some people do and a lot of people um, it's difficult sometimes to judge sizes when you're in a gallery or when you're on a website looking at things it can be quite tricky just to see what actually fits so very boring very obvious it would seem but having an idea of the measurements if you found a space a wall where you think you'd like your art to hang that's really helpful um, and the other thing just to mention again and I talk about it elsewhere is that not every image, not every poster comes in any size. There are a great variety of sizes, and I talk about that separately about in, in the video about uh, formats and so on. A lot of variety, but it isn't a question of saying, well, I like that image and I like it in that size. Because, back to basics, these are original pieces of advertising produced when the films came out, when they went round to the cinemas. They came in particular sizes and using particular images. So it's not a question of producing a new poster. We can't just take the one sheet poster and produce it in a smaller or a larger size. So knowing what your size is then helps to, to work towards what's going to fit nicely in that space. So those are the two the more practical, boring questions out of the way. And then we get on to the more interesting stuff. And again, I talk in a separate clip about why people collect film posters, why people buy film posters. And obviously it's not the same, not everyone who buys is a collector. But for most people, if they've got the idea of, of having a film poster, there's some sort of idea of, of why. Maybe there's an image they've seen on a friend's wall, they like that. Maybe they remember a particular film poster from when they first saw the film at the cinema. Maybe it's a favourite film, maybe it's a favourite actor, actress, even director, even genre, there's so many different ways of choosing. But again, having that initial idea um, 
of course is really helpful. And it, as I say, sometimes you just have an idea. That's great. But if you can sit down for a few minutes and just try and follow that through, where does that idea come from? What is it about the idea of a film poster that has interested me? Again, that helps us and we can make a start. So with those three things uh, in mind, then we can start to work through in more detail what's available, what might be available, what we could find for you, or, or what we've got here on the shelves ready to go. So I talk in other videos more about sizes, about nationalities, and about how these variables work. And I also try and talk a bit more about why people would buy a film poster and what sort of reasons you might have. But for now, I hope that's a helpful introduction.